Estamos en la playa El Tecolote, en México, y vamos a hacerle una entrevista a François, el dueño del bus Ushuaia, que tiene una historia súper interesante para contarnos y además nos llama mucho la atención porque hizo un viaje desde Alaska hasta Argentina en este bus. Why is your bus called Ushuaia? Because I made a website called expeditionushuaia.com. You know Ushuaia? Yeah, in yeah. Argentina. Because Before I start doing this, 2019, huh, I did the trips. It was before the COVID, okay. but I didn't know people did the van life, but I was not living doing that kind of thing. I was living a completely different life. Mm -hmm. I was traveling, staying in fancy hotel, limousine i was living another life you know yeah what happened for many years i was just working for entertainment i do a show comedy painting a show Introduce myself, my name is Jean-Francois. In English, Jean-Francois. <laughs> so in the beginning, my, pro my program was basically my, my performance art. I call it extreme art, because mm -hmm. I used to do extreme sport when I was young. I did a lot of like crazy stuff, like, you know, <laughs> I was in the first wave of paragliding and every crazy stuff. I was like, you know, in the early, late 70s so when i start doing the show on stage crazy i say what am i gonna call this i'm gonna call extreme art like extreme sport so i made it more extreme even most people when they have to do something in their life they think about it they don't know da, 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 and then you get to go and take the action to do it yeah you know like nike say just do it yeah 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 so my performance was that i have a big giant canvas and I look at it and I'm thinking an image and then I pick up my pen and I go and bang, do it. That was my, my thing. I was talking about having an idea, being creative, but the main thing is about going out there and just do it, you know. Yeah. So that was my thing. So I travel everywhere doing that all over the world for companies, you know, for 25 years. But then mm -hmm. I had to do something new. So I started doing projects. So I did the diving with the great white sharks. I wanted to speak about facing your fear. You know, if you want to let go your fear, you have to face your biggest fear. Because once you face your biggest fear, every other fear that you have yeah. is smaller and it's okay, you know. So you have to confront your, your problems. And because I paint, I'm going to paint underwater with the great white sharks. That will be facing my biggest fear. Yeah. Painting a painting while the big shark comes around. So I did that one. Then I did So I did that one. Then I did the uh, rock climbing summits and paint on uh, on some of the biggest mountain. Crazy. Pushing, pushing the odds. Really and crazy. Then... And um, where are you from? Me, I'm from Belgium. And then I came to Las Vegas, 1993. When I, so I sailed around the world on my sailboat, I came to Las Vegas, I had a zip bag. When yeah. I did that bag like this, with my clothes and a box of pencil and stuff to do art. Hmm. I went to paint portrait of people on the, on the front of the hotels in town. Hmm. I had money, I was not broke, but I was doing it because I want to be like the artist, you know. 
And then I start doing that, and I start doing shows, big show on stage everywhere in the world, and and have big career. And uh, you know, so it was, it's exciting. It was exciting. It's good to, it's good to start something and be successful. All right, guys. Uh, here is Ushuaia, the coolest school bus in the world. And why this bus? The company was uh, in San Francisco. They wanted to do like the hippie at the night. Everybody's gonna dress up like the 60s. We're gonna have music like the 60s and blah, blah, blah. Paint it like the hippie. So I, I got the bus for the company and I had uh, four bus. I bought four bus. So there was different buses. And when they finished the nine events, I liked the bus, I, go, I kept this one because this one was the one for the painting. And uh, bonjour, uh, welcome to Ushuaia. This is a uh, bluebird bus uh, which uh, went traveling all around uh, South America and uh, everywhere. After a while, I was not doing any camping in my life really. And uh, so I ran into my vacation home in Oregon, some French guys, they were driving a big truck there, uh, and they were looking to park the city. It's a small town and you barely can park anywhere in the summer. It's like I had a big place with big driveways. So I saw these guys and, and as I say, you're never going to park. So come park at my place. So they park at my place for like a week. And, and every day they come for a glass of wine and a pizza or some food at my house. And they got me all excited about doing the trip to Patagonia because they were doing it. Yeah. And they say, oh yeah, we're driving, we retire, we're driving around the world, we did Africa, now we're going to Alaska. And I said, well, that's cool. And then I, I start thinking about that. And I was like, I don't want to go buy another car. So I thought, oh, maybe I can do that with a bus. So I went to Vegas, I got the bus, I brought it back to Oregon and then I put a new flooring at the time. I take off this and I fix the back mm -hmm. the shower. I equip the old bus to go like, over there, you know, and I decided I'm going to do that. But, but it was perfect for me because I wanted to be able to paint and have paintings, traveling and yeah. so I had the space to do anything I want. You know. This is uh, very exciting because uh, it's neither a little house and neither a van. It's a modern design, uh, contemporary uh, house on wheels. Uh, there is a peloton bike, uh, a studio uh, to paint, a studio for art, which is minimal, but uh, there is everything you need in it. And uh, the bus says, uh, rear engine and uh, a lunch to hang out here with television, uh, refrigeration, air conditioning, uh, either everything uh, you need for the road. All the seating uh, arrangement are professionally made. Uh, the frame is welded uh, and uh, it's all storage under the whole bus. There is uh, hundreds of gallons of water capacity. Uh, everything is uh, self-contained. You can be on the road and stay off-grid forever. Uh, solar equipment, everything. Uh, there is a cabinet here uh, with locks. It's actually a school cabinet. We fit perfectly the style of the bus. Uh, there is the compartment in the back uh, for sleeping with shower with the toilet it's an electric toilet like in a sailboat uh, there's a backup toilet in case uh, and uh, yeah it's a beautiful little bus it's 40 foot long there is everything uh, on board that you need there is a kitchen how long the trip to argentina take? i did uh, I, because what i what because you know the raining season i drove down all the way to panama I store my bus, I went back home. Mm -hmm. Then I I wait for the season to get better. I flew back, did it in segment like that. So I think all together, I did like one year, 13 months or something like that. I, I stay a bit longer in uh, in Argentina to go to uh, cl rock climb the Cerro Torre, you know? Oh, So nice. there I did. 
I wanted to climb in uh, Ushuaia, the Pyramid Mountain, but when I got there, it was ice. Oh, so yeah. So I was not equipped to do it, and uh, I didn't do it. And so much you can do, huh? And a common question is, how did you across with the bus in Panama? The, when you get there, everybody tried to make money. There is a, there is ferry, you can put it on shipping line. People have like boats that, you know, for cheap money, you'll put it on a, on a fishing boat and they'll go, you know? Yeah. So I... I But the bus is big yeah, yeah, and... Yeah. And uh, they have containers, they have containers you can put vehicle or barge where you can vehicle. So you put the vehicle and they can lift it and put it on. So, because they cannot lift the bus like this, but they have platforms. How much? Oh, that was expensive. I don't remember, but I was, I was, because the price went up since the COVID, but at the time it was $13,000. Oh my God. My friend, he pays 7,000 for his truck but my bus was way bigger. Yeah. And so in the beginning I thought I'm going to drive over there and then when I get to Ushuaia, I will donate my bus to a school or something. But you're back. <laughs> but yeah, but then because when I got there, you have temporary uh, papers and you cannot donate it. It's against, you know, you have it's yeah. you have you have to take it out. Mm -hmm. So I I had the choice to ship it to Europe or ship it somewhere or drive it back. And for me, it was it was better to drive it back because at least I'll keep it. Hmm. Because if I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, ship it back to Europe for what? I thought about to ship it in Europe and travel in Europe, but then I was thinking, Europe, it's too many small road to go with the bus. <laughs> yeah, mean, you know, this is true. But I mean, the bus is good, I think, because of the space. A lot of people think it's big, but you have one bus too. It's nice when you travel to have comfort a little bit, huh? You know, pretty much everything you need to be on the road and uh, cook and leave and do it all. It's pretty stylish. There's a professional sound system, LED light in the ceiling, uh, two different sound system, one for the house, one for the driver. And uh, the good side about it is that when you are parked somewhere, and you want to uh, forget you are in a bus or a vehicle, you just can close the whole thing and uh, you don't have the feeling to be in a bus, you feel like you're in a, an apartment in a place here where, you know, you can have a life. And for instance here, uh, I'm in uh, La Paz and I'm sitting here and every morning I get up and this is the view out of the window and that's the good thing about the school bus. Compared to RV, RV has nice, nice feature, but uh, the school bus have full panoramic view. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you get up in the morning and you're at the beach, ocean front. Life couldn't be any better unless you live uh, in Malibu. But even in Malibu, you won't have uh, that uh, pristine ocean and uh, whales and everything at the. Uh, on the front of your window and perhaps if you do it would cost you about hundred million dollars so you're in a different uh, thinking here all the equipment is here at the one, one, sit, one place uh, all the equipment for your electronics down below here are all the batteries and uh, all the systems So here it is, this is uh, Ushuaia, the bus, the expedition bus uh, of extreme art, which is also a painting studio, basically. Bus come with uh, full scuba gears and uh, inflatable uh, dinghy uh, with a motor. Bus has everything on board, uh, generator, solar panel, air conditioning. I'm an adventurer and I do all kinds of stuff like that. So the whole bus has these uh, speakers everywhere incorporated in the ceiling. And uh, the bus has a full-size generator on uh, gasoline. And uh, the bus is totally equipped with a heater system on propane an electric heater, everything pretty much uh, self-contained because the bus can travel uh, intercontinental 
the bus has a lounge area in the back where uh, you can uh, do your morning fitness and yoga with uh, all sort of uh, equipment to work out, weight. Uh. This is the sleeping area over here, queen size bed. Basically, uh, you get a, a shower with a bathtub here and uh, and you get a toilet which is actually uh, really nice because uh, you have an electric toilet uh, like in a sailboat with full, full flushing uh, abilities so the bus is completely uh, equipped uh, to be on the road and live your life uh, as comfortable as you want basically a lot of money was spent on building this bus because just the seating arrangement here was costing about $40,000 it was custom made uh, by a corporate group for uh, for an event so the whole entire bus is uh, built like this with a full storage under everything basically uh, it's professionally uh, you know built by a by a company who uh, transformed limousine in Las Vegas and uh, as you can see uh, yep it's ready to go that was why I did the bus, because I had one. I wanted to do personal development seminar for people. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people get to a place in life where they're 50 years old, whatever the age, something happened in your life. It happened to everybody. When you get at the age where you have raised your kids, where you get retired, you, you lose your job in an age where you're 50 years old or more. And then you you know you've done the raise the kids and and you know have the career the accomplishment and all this and you go to your psychology in other stage of life you know it's suddenly you don't have that need for competition and making it and build the house but like me I I travel when I was younger I, the day when I get married and I had kids I changed my thinking I had to go and make money and be there for the kids and you know be serious even my job was not very serious you know it's still I had to be providing so a lot of people get to that place in life where they have to find a new life if you retire suddenly you have all that time in your hands mm -hmm. you know what I mean or, or if you have raised your kids and next to it they like you they go away then you home like with your wife or husband and you're like what are you gonna do now we re then you retire then you what you you do gardening mm -hmm. so people have some many people have a hard time to figure out what's next what am I gonna do so I wanted to do seminars I, I wrote a book it's not published but it's gonna be called nine life the art of reinventing the self you know hmm. my kids went private school so the, the, my my wife used to drive the kids to school but I already see this big yellow bus because I live in the United States yeah and I never went in it because you know <laughs> and then I was only seeing that stupid yellow bus with a stop sign on the side and I say what a, you know <laughs> yeah. and then I was always thinking I'm gonna drive to the end of the world to meet people, I don't know, paint, painting, share my adventure, share my stories, and in the process maybe discover myself, discover who I, what I want, who I am. Yeah. So the bus was really good for that because it was the school of life, the school bus of life. Yeah. You see what I mean? So for my uh, my video and all, it was perfect, you know, to take a school bus versus a van or, or a jeep. A yeah. bus is something you take people and you go places. You know, and and uh, so that was the idea of it. So that's why the bus and yeah. Ushuaia, because Ushuaia is the city, the saddest city of the yeah. hemisphere. So when I decided I'm gonna go to the end of the world, it's Ushuaia. This yeah. is the saddest place. Started down. the trip in Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Because the Dead Horse Alaska is the northest place you can go by road. Yeah. And travel from there, you know. So I drove from Oregon up there. But you know, for European, it seems a big crazy adventure. But if you live in America, you know, we go on the road for like crazy, you know, like for day trip, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like I live in Las Vegas, I already went, you know, you go with everybody to the Grand Canyon, Zion. It's just like you go, you know, America yeah. is a big country. Yeah. You do that stuff. It's like you live in Oregon. My neighbor is 86 years old. He used to yeah. go visit his daughter in Alaska. 
<laughs> with with this van, you know. Yeah. In, in because in Europe we think smaller because it's yeah. small. <laughs> so we think go to you in South America, everybody go. Oh my God, they think you know they're Christopher Columbus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they travel <laughs> with a freaking truck. We look like they go on the moon. Yeah. Well, in Americans, you see them. They go in a stupid car and they drive. You know. Yeah. Or they go with a fifth wheeler. And after the trip to Argentina, you decided to live here. Well, no, I don't live here. I live in Las Vegas. But what, what happened? Yeah. I had Swiss friend I met traveling, and they were telling me, "Oh, we're gonna go to Mexico." And I was like, everybody was saying, "Oh, it's dangerous. There's so much COVID over there." Blah blah blah. Don't go to Mexico. And I was like, I don't know. You, you sure you want to go? And they said, "Yeah, we're going." And then they cross, and they had a Iveco truck. And, they, and so they cross and, and they say, oh no, it's perfect, it's nice. And, uh, uh, they sent me some picture. So I was in California. I, I, I went all the way back to uh, Oregon. I get my bus and I start driving down. So I, I spent the, COVID, the end of the COVID year. About the, the trip, the big trip to Ushuaia, Mm, what thing was the best? Me personally, with the bus, I like to go in the nature. And uh, the, the good thing about the whole South America is that you can park on the side of the road and nobody can say nothing. They don't care, the Mexican. The same thing in Guatemala and all the South America. You know, nobody bother you, you know. You painted this bus? Yeah, yeah. I paint, I paint the bus different scenes. <laughs> In the beginning, it was like the hippie. I mean, I, I changed during the, the during the trip. I was changing the, the picture on it. I painted uh, Machu Picchu, Grand Canyon. I, I changed the painting. You, so. you paint the trip and your yeah um, yeah yeah. I kind of paint it. Yeah, <laughs> mostly. Yeah, I changed the bus, to change the color all the time. But uh, since I, I stay here, I painted more ocean, huh? so yeah. blue. But during the COVID, you had people who had lost their house, lost this, people who were out of luck. I ran into people who were like 86 years old, they live in their van for their, you know, they don't have any money anymore. You had all these kind of thing. And, and it's interesting because it makes you think, if I was 86 years old, what would matter? Who cares if I live in a van <laughs> for the rest of my life? How yeah. many years is that? It's better to live in your life than a home for retirees. Yeah. It, you know, the old man is still can uh, run around with his van and go to the Grand Canyon and fish or whatever. Because I met this old guy in the desert and he was like really old like that. And then I see this guy and he say, oh yeah, I'm a farmer, but I'm retired. I live up north in uh, Reno. And he was old, he was almost 90 years old, and he said, I bought this little uh, sailboat from a dentist, he only barely used it. I bought it for like, you know, a few thousand dollars, and I never sailed, but I'm gonna learn. And he was like, old. <laughs> and I thought it was cool. Yeah. And I think you meet people like this, and if you live in city, you don't do that, because in the city everybody tried to be like somebody, like everybody else, and everybody tried to be more than the others. Yeah, see what I mean? Oh, oh you know, we're doing great, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, while you go like this, you get these eclectic, eclectic people. Yeah. You Sometimes <laughs> you see some crazies. Yeah. And the crazy, they're not so crazy. Because what is to be crazy? Yeah. <laughs> it's to be different than everybody else. Everybody always told me I was crazy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, you know, maybe I'm crazy, <laughs> but I'm good crazy. And uh, it's good to do interviews because there's a lot of people like and I don't want to be retired because I want to go back to do stuff, you know, come on. Once your kids are, are grown up and nobody wants to go to the vacation home anymore, what are you going to do? Go sit there like by yourself, like a loser? It's what I did. I used to go by myself, sit at the house because I have a nice house on the beach. And then I was bored. <laughs> it's the days long. And all my neighbors were like 20 years older than me going like this, you know, with the dog to go make pee pee. That's it all they did. Yeah. So I was like, I don't want to be turning into this. If I stay, I'm going to be that. Yeah. So, you know, at least I did a trip and do something else. It's like, now nah, I have a whole bunch of planned stuff. So I, I'm not old. I'm not, I don't feel old. Then I can do some crazy stuff again. What would you say for um, young people? You know, do your thing. Whatever that calls you, do it because you know you live once may as well do it 
and then until you get married you have children because that's another page of life take a break you know enjoy life view things like you do and then after that you'll be like yeah you're gonna want to go to it's like me i was fed up for years of working and then there was like four of the kids and the wife came there was like a big family like five kids and the wife and and the guy were like in their 50s they, you know they had, you, you could see they had money and they were on a nice vacation trip with their kids and they were so happy to be all together you know yeah for kids like this and teenager and university one i mean every age yeah and i saw this guy and i thought in myself one day i'll be like this guy <laughs> i swear and yeah. i did it because I got successful, I took my, my family vacationing everywhere on cruises, Tahiti, uh, Alaska, they do crazy stuff. So I'm proud of was able to do it. Because when I see that guy, I say, I want that. One day I want that. I want to be proud like that, to have done that, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And it, it says fun to do that than just go like this and be free, you know? Yeah. Because, you know, by yourself, it's not that exciting. It's all different part of life, but all your life you're gonna to have to try to do your, your thing. I mean, you have to be responsible, you know, for what you need to be responsible for, you know. But for the rest, you know, because that's where your happiness is gonna be is when you do the thing you love. Nobody wants to go work in a job then it's horrid to get up in the morning and go do it. You, you know, you have to try to answer that sometime in life you have to because you don't have the choice you know but you can have a boring job you can have a boring job and still have a good attitude toward it you can go work in a you know people work at walmart you can work at walmart all day going like this saying like fuck i work in walmart i don't get good money or you can go to walmart and say I'm going to work in Walmart and today I'm going to help all these people to find what they need. <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. And in the end of the day, I feel great because I'm going to meet all sort of people. You know, interesting people. So it's how you look at things. Because you can have a great job and get tired of doing it because it's, you've done it for too long. I was doing shows on big stage, big company, big money. And I remember I was doing sometimes so much and I was backstage thinking, fuck, I'm <laughs> sick of doing this thing. I want to do something else. I told that to myself. Yeah. You know, don't say things like that to yourself because sooner or later it'll come to you. You have always to tell what you want in your head because your head play trick on you. It's true. Yeah, it's true. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's not a joke, you know. You have to tell yourself you, this, you know what you want yeah you know and not be afraid to say i want this i want that i want that you got to project something out there have plans all the time i'm doing this until then and then i'm doing this and then i'm doing that because you put it in your head if you don't put it in your head everybody else is gonna put shit in your head <laughs> it's the truth though yeah so you know it's why always have goals ideas things you want to do because we live in a world where there is more garbage mostly coming from the phone and the news and the this that's what comes in your head otherwise everybody else bullshit yeah who care about other people bullshit you know what i mean yeah it's, it's more important to put what you want in your head and, and people don't realize that you know when you're young you don't realize that and some people never realize that you know it's true it's a journey for you to discover yourself it's not so much about discovering the place. Through talking to people, through experience, through this, you discover yourself. I well, mean, the trip or anything in life, uh, but the trip, it's mostly that. You know? Yeah. Whatever you look, it feeds back to you. So, you know, you learn something. You, know, you learn a lot of things about you. Yeah. It's nice, look at that here by the ocean like this. Come on. <laughs> You know, in, if you're in California, if a house on the ocean in Malibu, it would cost 50 million dollars. <laughs> yeah. Here, I'm like this, and I see the big yacht from these billionaires coming by. They're probably looking at me with a binocular going, look at this guy there with a the bus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. me, I go like this. <laughs> you know? 
cool. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>